Hey everybody, we want to welcome you to the Refined Women's Broadcast. We're so excited for y'all to be here with us today. My name is Pastor Takaya Revelo, and I have a very special guest, my best friend, my home girl, <laughs> Nicolasa Roman. Hi everyone, my name is Nicolasa Roman, and I will be sharing with y'all a little bit of my um, testimony on how I became unstuck or how I'm walking through getting unstuck. Um, you know, through this uh, trial and tribulation that I, you know, did not foresee uh, me encountering. But however, I'm walking through it and gracefully, by the grace of God, I am doing, I'm in a good place right now, honestly. I really am. And I'm so grateful and thankful for uh, the people that have been there for me, the, um, just the Jesus for him yeah. standing with me through it all and ever leaving me or forsaken in me. Mm -hmm. um, that's where honestly I found my strength. Mm -hmm. um, the world doesn't have much to offer. I've known that from a at a very since a very young age. And um, yeah, like you just have to continue seeking the Lord in everything that you do and just know that He is your peace, that He is your joy that he is going to um, bring you through whatever you're walking through. And you don't want to run through it because, mm -hmm. honestly, you're going to, like, miss out on the things that... Um, that God is doing. Yes. Because I always tell people, like, don't get so caught up in the destination that you are not enjoying the journey. Exactly. And so many times, like, we're trying to just run through it and just be well, done with it you know like you know? hurry up and get it hurry up and get it over with yes but with healing healing is a slow process it is it literally it's a i know even for me my own personal testimony like it is literally like a step-by-step -step process and yeah. just allowing god to just come into different areas you know of Absolutely. your life like you may trust him in your finances but maybe your marriage is on the rocks you yeah. know Absolutely. you may have a good marriage but maybe you're struggling with parenting your kids you know yeah. and just being willing to allow god to just come into Definitely. you know and so i want to pray before we get started yes Father, right now, Lord, I want to pray, Lord, over this broadcast. And God, I pray over each and every person who's watching, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that they would have ears to hear, Father, and that the words that we speak, God, that it would fall on good ground, Father, and that it would minister to them today, God. Lord, I pray, God, that people would be set free and delivered today, God, that they would begin their journey towards healing. And if they're already on the journey, God, that this would just be a supplement and a help towards what they're already walking out, Father. Lord, I just want to thank you, God, for my friend Nikki here, who's being so brave. God and God I pray that you would just you would speak through the both of us God Lord that you would be with our words be with our mouth Father yes. and God I pray God that today God that there would be so much healing Amen. and so much deliverance yes. God through what we're doing today in yes. Jesus name Amen. 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 so I want to start this out by reading uh, Jeremiah 29 11 and I know everybody knows it but I want to read this because with everything that we're going to talk about I want to I want to shed light that even in the middle of the mess, even in the middle of the pain, even in the middle of what it seems like your life is falling apart, God still knows the plans that exactly. he has for you. He and really I know does. for you like it didn't change just because all these things happened, it didn't change the fact that God still had a great plan, plan for exactly. you that he still wanted to give you a future, you know, yes. and a hope. Yes. And so I'm going to be reading that just starting off. So it says, "For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you," says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome. Yes. And so that you would know that maybe maybe her testimony, you know, maybe the same thing you're walking out, that you would know that just like God gave her a hope in her final outcome, Amen. he's going to give you hope oh, in yes, your final definitely. outcome. Yes. And so you ready to get off into our questions, Carol? Go ahead. Okay. So. And so today we're going to be talking about getting unstuck. So one part of getting unstuck is first off recognizing how you got stuck in the first place. The root of it. Yes. And you know, my biggest thing is I don't deal with your fruit. I want to get to the root of it. Amen. I want to, because it's the root. That's where the water and, and it's being fed is in the roots. And so you got to be willing to tear up those roots and identify those roots. So that way you can begin to see healing Definitely. and breakthrough in your situation. Yes. And so for you, how, how do you feel like you got stuck? I feel like it goes back to whenever my parents got a divorce. Um, it was a very a hard situation for myself because I am the youngest out of the girls. There's five girls and one boy. And I do have a half-sister in California. Shout out to them. Um, 
But um, in my household growing up, there was five girls and one boy. And I was the baby out of the girls. And, of course, my brother is the youngest out of the family. But um, we took it the hardest, honestly. And it was like whenever that happened, um, like my parents lost a sense of direction of like holding us together in the sense of like um, being still there for us. But instead, it took it took a toll in, on them like going their separate ways and focusing on themselves and so like financially they were there but your emotional needs was no longer being catered to exactly and you I know? think that's a lot of times that we we do that we don't we think that oh well as long as I'm just providing or as long as I'm just doing this like I don't have to worry about the fact of their emotional needs but no you know our mental health like I know for like I told you yesterday yes. like for me like with my mom you know you know, my place where I got stuck at was when I was sexually abused. Yes. And then, like, my mom, you know, I couldn't talk to her mm -hmm. about these things. I couldn't talk to my dad about yes. these things and stuff like that because, you know, we, she was dealing with depression. And so we grew up in, like, manipulation and narcissism. Yes. And so having that safe space, and they didn't understand that I did have those emotional needs. Yes. And, and my mind, you know, was being, you know, the, the battle, yes, you know, in yes. your mind. Yes. And so it was very hard for me as a young girl trying to navigate life because honestly, I didn't have the tools. I wasn't financially stable. I didn't, you know, your, your brain is still growing, developing and everything. So I wasn't capable of making these grown up adult decisions at that age, you know? And so, um, definitely I have to say that my parents' divorce took a root on what, you know, now what, what unfolded in my life, honestly. So, but what I, I mean, jumping ahead, you know, but what I love about like, cause I know your yes. whole, I know the story, yes. I know the behind it is that even though like that was how it was like seeing how you're taking those steps to be there for your children. Oh emotional yes, needs. definitely. I am, um, trying my hardest to sit there and be there for my kids. Cause that was one of the things is like, I didn't ever, you never get married to get a divorce. Obviously you get married because it's like, um, you want to build a future. Yes. Like you want to grow with this person and things like that, you know, but, um, however, that's not, that wasn't the case for my parents. And then, you know, I walked through the same thing that my, my parents to walk through in a different way though, because theirs were more, theirs was more like abuse and stuff like that. And mine wasn't so much that it was different, but, um, anyway, so yes, like, my parents weren't really there, spirit, like in the um, sense of, um, me, you know, mentally being there and mm -hmm. having that, you know, connection or whatever. But, um, like, I try my hardest to be there for my kids um, yeah. now, knowing what I walked through and how isolated I felt. And I felt like my parents were just going towards each other. It's like, go tell your mom this and go tell your dad this and this, this and that. It's like, they didn't have that communication. And I was like, you know what? I do not want to be like that. Yeah. And and I learned, you know, that... Because it puts an unrealistic expectation yes, on the child. it really does. You have to be that uh the mediator yes, you know and yes. nobody and no child felt, wants honestly. to be the mediator between two adults and that's where like us as adults we have to be willing to take ownership of you know the the choices because yes. you know as children i know y'all didn't ask for that divorce no. and so therefore you shouldn't have to bear the weight of it if anything if as adults you know if we're making these decisions we have to make sure that we're taking care of our little ones you yes. know like for me like my mom you know going through depression and stuff how she treated us like she was abusive in every way shape like just abusive because of it and for me you know I walked out you know that tormenting and things like that in depression and with Addison you know like I had to I can't tell you how many times I had to go ask forgiveness as forgiveness yeah. because I felt like I was lashing out and things like that and just asking for forgiveness and being willing to just humble myself you know yes. because to say that we're always going to get it right that's just unrealistic no, you're not going to always get it right not. it's it's troubles and trials like we're walking through mm -hmm. them but the lord says to rejoice because he has overcome the world and, yes and so you know, knowing we, that yeah so like honestly like i don't um i don't sit there and like fear or like have this like mm -hmm. um i don't know i don't know i don't even know how to explain it but i i don't I'm not sad about like not having it right all the time. There's yeah. times where I do get overwhelmed, don't get me wrong, but you know, I'm like, you know what, I'm walking it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all we can do, you know, and uh, hopefully one day my kids will see and understand um, 
why this took place and everything else like that. And all I can do is be there for them now. That it and would give them tools. Yes. Because parents, you know, and I want to, as mothers, you know, or fathers, if there's any men watching, you know, as a parent, you're either going to leave your children with tools or baggage, mm -hmm. you know, and through how she's walking this out <laughs> I by, feel like I have by baggage. Yeah, like, and, but trying to communicate <laughs> with our kids, you know, and me trying to make sure I am communicating with Addison and things like that, that gives them tools to be able to talk through those hard places. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because we have to be willing to communicate through those difficult places. Yes. A lot of times we want to shut down. And I know, like, even for me, like, I'm that person. Like, I would but shut down. But it's okay. Down. And, and I feel like it's okay to be at a place where you shut down. Just don't stay there. Yes. Like, you though know? we're walking through that valley, don't don't dwell in the valley. Mm -hmm. Don't make a house there. No. You, there may be times, yes, but keep you got to keep going yes. and, and move past that. Definitely. And so just, I want to read our verse, uh, Proverbs 31, uh, 25. Mm-hmm. And it says, um, strength and dignity are her clothing and her position is strong and secure. I love that. To have a strong and secure position. And nice. I know like, I got to give it to this girl. She's a tough cookie. <laughs> she is. She's a tough cookie. I always tell like she's strong, but I know that her strength is in the Lord. Definitely. It, it's being that having that strong and secure position in the Lord that causes her to be able to endure the things that's coming against you as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Thank you. And it says um, she rejoices over the future. And another way it says that she laughs without fear of the future. The latter day are time to come knowing that she and her family are in readiness for it. That by doing the things that you're doing right now. And by, you know, learning and I know like how you're journaling and all these things that you're doing to just equip yourself. Definitely. That's going to keep, that's making you and your family ready. So when things do come, you'll be able to deal with it healthy. Definitely. I, I agree. And uh, I, I love this verse so much because it's like. The Lord's strength is what covers me. Mm -hmm. That's where I, I definitely find the strength from. It's it's so crazy because I was telling her yesterday. I was like, um, you know, other people see the strengths in you and whenever you can't see it in yourself. Yeah. But them even like acknowledging it and like letting you know and telling telling you what they see in you. It's it's so. Um, amazing you know because you know it's not because of your own strength it's because of the lord you know mm -hmm. and he just we knew this was gonna happen yes i bought a whole box of tissues from Boo. um and like i said there's been times where i felt like i didn't have strength you know um uh, in my marriage and my um with my kids um, in like just different areas, you know, you kind of like feel like you, you're losing it. Yeah. But it's, it's in the Lord that you really find your strength in. And, um, he's the one that closes with it and he gives us that dignity to keep pursuing and keep moving forward and forward forth in everything that we do. So, um, it's like putting on your steel toe boots and them big girl pants. Yes. And then whenever you feel uplifted and he gives you that strength, you can smile because yeah. he knows, um, he knows what he has and, you know, in store for you, the plans, like going back to Jeremiah 29, 11, he knows mm -hmm. the plans and the hopes that he has for your life and everything. And so you can laugh at the future and laugh without fear of the future because he's in your future. If he's yes. here now, he's in your future. Yes, that he's through it, Alpha and Omega. Yes. That God is through and through. He said that he who begun a good work in you will bring it to completion. Amen. That it's him who he started that work in you, Nikki. Yes. You know, even back then, it was, you said you were 9 or 11 and 12. What? Whenever you uh, went to that encounter. No, I, it was in like 2006. So in 2006, I had gone to an encounter and uh, actually my mom had gone first. And oh my gosh, whenever it was like a three day thing. And like whenever she came back and whenever we went to go mm -hmm. receive her and stuff, cause they had like a little celebration thing and we went to go uh, pick her up or whatever, but it was like a fellowship and you know, just, I don't even know how to explain it, but it was just so awesome. And um, just seeing how my mom was just transformed, mm -hmm. you know, and and it wasn't like a complete transformation because, it, but that's where the Lord started mm -hmm. began, you know, began well, His it work in her the inside yes. first, and then it shows up. On but the it's like that 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 place where she was at. It's like in in her going to that encounter herself. It's it's like a that's what started. That's what yeah, sparked that her. Yeah, that shift in her and everything. And so whenever we went to go receive her and everything, it was like so awesome because you could just feel this like spiritual unction, like this. 
the Holy Spirit was just so overwhelming and like you could just like feel it and I don't know I just embraced it honestly and I have never felt nothing like that in my life so then the next time that they had an encounter I was like I'm going like mm -hmm. I want to go you know like I want to I want to feel this yeah you know and so I did and oh my gosh like God God has just been so good to me honestly and you know we laid Love it all it. out on on the cross yeah you know all the um the sins and iniquities and everything else mm -hmm. like that and don't get me wrong like we all fall short from the glory of god you know yeah. but you in him we can up we get up you know yeah. and he's not he's not here to condemn us no you know he convicts us yeah. that's why we feel like the guilt like oh my gosh you know i did something wrong lord please forgive me repent you know that's why he tells us to repent because he doesn't want us to like harden our hearts and uh harbor all that like emotion that we're feeling that makes us feel guilty also, he anything. wants to when we repent he frees us from the wages of sin exactly and so he wants to free you from that that payment that's like you know the enemy's trying to bring yes. that payment and he wants us to be to be free from that yes and there's so many I, I just feel that there's so many women you know on here watching and you're walking out that where you do feel shame mm -hmm. and you do oh, feel guilt you that know? was a, that was definitely one of the things that um i did walk through that mm -hmm. like not in the sense of like i care what people said but Sometimes it's our a, own head, truly. Yes, it's not honestly. other people's opinion. It's our opinion of ourselves. Yes, because I felt like um, I was made for more. Mm -hmm. Or like I, I was expecting more. And and it's like that one saying, I don't know if you have heard it or not, but it's like um, the expectations it are the mother of all. Um, I don't know how it is, but it's like don't have expectations on certain things. Too high of expectation if if it's just gonna like hurt you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know how to explain it. Oh, putting unrealistic expectations, expectations on people are, are the mother of all um, whatever it is. Well, I wish I knew it. I, I, I'm telling y'all, I would so finish this quote if I could. Yes. Uh, but excuse like our having, kids in the background. We're moms. It's basically <laughs> having unrealistic expectations and it's just, they're going to fail you. Okay. Mankind is going to fail you yeah. at all times and stuff. And like, sometimes we fail ourselves, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, cause I felt like sometimes I felt like I, uh, like I expected more of myself and maybe other people expected more of myself. Um, I've had a few people like kind of, you know, Look at me. Uh, but being willing to hands. have grace upon yourself. Yes. I think for me, that was like the biggest thing is to learn is how to have grace upon myself because I was just so, I felt embarrassed that I was dealing with suicidal thoughts. I'm just going to be honest. I was embarrassed. I felt yeah. embarrassed that I was dealing with depression. I felt so embarrassed that I was doing all these things and, and I was serving. I mean, we were youth pastors, yeah. you know, and things like that. And then we were just doing all these things and yet I'm getting bombarded and I'm like, I'll be honest, I straight up told God, like, I will not be a pastor if you don't take this away. Yeah. <laughs> and I thank God that he set me free from, you know, depression and suicidal thoughts, but I was embarrassed of that. Yeah. Honestly, even being sexually abused, I was ashamed of that i felt like you know even when i talked to y'all about it like that was so hard yes. and that's something that we we said we talk about today it's like you know the importance of having the a good, good yeah people like, around you yes but you can't oh just God, have anybody yes <laughs> that's how i was gonna tell us like now listen you can't you can have people just because you got people around you all doesn't mean all that they're gonna benefit you people. all exactly. people ain't for you yes and um, I have to say that what helped me in this walk this past year, because um, honestly, my divorce was, uh, I walked through it last year and coming up next month will be a, a entire year that the split had occurred. And in July will be a whole entire year that, you know, was finalized. But um, through it all and stuff, like I had... Um, I've known Takai for some time now. Cause yeah. she, mm. It's kind of crazy because, like, for us to end up being <laughs> best friends, because when I first started going, like, when we were back going to Word of Life, she was, like, one of the first people, like, I, you meet people in a high and by, but I mean, like, actually met. Like, we j there was no nursery that morning, remember? No, no. And we both were in there, and next thing I know, it was just, like, we were just crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, we were just crying. It was an intimate moment, for sure, and it, just being vulnerable with each other because, honestly, I didn't know her story, and she didn't know mine. Uh-huh. You know, but we, we had so many similarities mm -hmm. honestly and it's like girl you're living my life you're living my, my life <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so anyways it's very important for you to have mm -hmm. um friends that are gonna sharpen you yes and in the word it tells you in uh proverbs what was that scripture i know i wrote it down somewhere is it proverbs 27 17 i think so um sorry let me see 
be accurate, huh? Yep. Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And so that's very important. And like we gather together as friends and like mm -hmm. thank y'all. We've that. thanked each other and like sometimes we don't agree with uh what the other person says or whatever, but it all comes down to the word, you know, and yeah. they are like Look, this is what this says. How does this align with this? You know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, you're right. You know, like I think it, it helps you reflect honest. honestly on your on your personal life, mm -hmm. and um, they're not coming from from a bad place to um, edify you because they want to see you like good friends, and um, you know. Well, good friends want to see you um, edified. Win. Yeah, they win want to see and, you win and everything, you know, and they want the best for you and, and stuff they don't like be that. jealous of no. you. That's no. one of the biggest things that I've been that I am so thankful for is like how you two like like everybody saw the house, but y'all saw the journey to get the house. Yes, definitely. And the hell it yes. took <laughs> to, to get the house. Yes. But like just being there to reassure me and just being there walking with me and even like, you know, we ended up um, having an impromptu girls trip because God knew it was my heart desire to have a girls trip. <laughs> and Holly was like, Holly wasn't there at a girls trip yet. And so we went to this conference and due to the situation where we ended up having a girls trip, she's like, well, God just going to give you what you want. And he did. <laughs> and so, the heartfelt yes. prayers of the righteous. Yes. <laughs> so, um. And I think it, it was that morning, right, when we were getting ready to leave, right? Yes. That morning, like, there was a, the topic of sexual abuse was coming up, and I was like, y'all, I don't want to talk about this. Like, I don't want to talk she about it. She shut down. Honestly. I did. She I... shut down and is like, I'm done. Don't talk to me about it. I don't even, like, want to see you. I was <laughs> mad, y'all. I was like, just shut up. Just be quiet. Like, yeah. they're my best friends, so I can be honest. I'm like, just hush. <laughs> and, but they but were like. you have to dig deep, honestly, yeah. to actually heal that wound and stuff like that. You don't want to just, like, it to scab over. Because if you scab it and then, it like, you pick at it, it's going to scab again. And it's, like, not really, truly going to heal. Yeah. And, honestly, um, you know, that's one area of her life. And I had to learn to stop scabbing wounds as well mm -hmm. as I walked through this journey. Because, um a lot of my thing was uh the shoulda coulda would have yes. you know and the what ifs yeah the what ifs and, and that everything past like reflection that. and even that i know we talked about how like you know in the whole of last year that was the thing that kind of like kept you stuck yes that was, was definitely like the shoulda, um, instead of being able to heal you know so the root of it was my parents but like you know me walking through it and stuff it was like almost um we talk about generational curses and stuff like that too and it's it's something that i'm i'm trying to break off like y'all i yes i've walked through it but i refuse to let my kids go yeah right and now, i love you know? that being willing to just say that you know what somebody has got to take ownership of this curse well i'm well, not do you know what i mean when i say ownership like yes. somebody has got to say listen it stops here with me yes. it stops here definitely and um, so, yeah, what were we talking about? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> we were talking about just taking the ownership, like, of that, like, and oh, just yes. saying that it's going to stop. The, on the shoulda, coulda, would have, yes, and um, <laughs> how that, that, that kept me stuck for a good while last mm -hmm. year and everything because it's like, um, you go back to that moment where it's like, you don't get married to get a divorce, you know, and the divorce show hadn't been finalized and everything, so it's like you almost feel... Uh, and then being with the person for so long, you almost feel like a sense of security or you like just a get sense, accustomed to that. Yeah, accustomed and everything else like that. And within myself, I was like, but I, you know, I've been here for this long and nothing has changed, you know. And even whenever he was trying to change and everything else like that, it was more of like only for like two weeks or so. So is that continual just like that cycle? Yeah, that it cycle. was just a cycle. And honestly, I was done with the cycles. I was done with, um, you know, feeling like I was carrying um, our, our family. And that was even and the spiritual. Like that we put like over here. It's like, you know. How did that feel, you know, like carrying your family spiritually? Oh, yes. It was it was a burden, honestly, because a man, they want that authority, right? They want to be the head of the household and macho and all that kind of stuff, which is good. And, and for... 
Well, from, I mean, if living you're the kingdom say, life. Yeah, but, well, you know what I'm saying? Men are called to be the head. But one thing that Eli always say is the head is not like I am just, you know, the no. head is the foundation that yes. the family, you know, is, is linked. Staying the wife on. leans on the husband. Yes. The children leans back on the wife. And so the men was designed to be able to support that support because that. Christ mm -hmm. is under him. God is under yes. Christ. And so building off of, you know, that kind of foundation, because yes. we were talking about yesterday, it's like yes. so many houses are being built on foundations that that were not designed to sustain yes, the weight exactly and it's like building a two-story house on a one-story foundation yeah that's it's not gonna stand no and when women are carrying the households and men are not stepping up the way they're supposed to you're building a two-story house mm -hmm. on a one-story foundation it, it changes the alignment yes. it makes the woman be the head and she's trying to sustain the weight of the man yeah. And, and that is that is not realistic for us, honestly. Especially in the spiritual realm, if you um, want to grow and stuff, you have to have that foundation yeah. in your household in order to sustain you. You know, because ultimately your man is gonna fall. You know, yeah. but the woman is gonna be there to pick him up. As, yeah. as that you know, help as, me, as, that encourager. Yes, exhorter. exactly. And you know, but the Lord is under you, so he he are you know even if you fall alone. The Lord is going to help you back up. You know, mm -hmm. he's going to give you and put laborers in your, in your life. Um, and that's you know, the to help of encourage a man and a you husband, and stuff. Oh, not a man and a husband. A man and a woman being together is that, you know, where it says like how two is better than one. Like how if one falls, then the other one can pick them up. Exactly. You know, if your husband, he falls as a wife, you can pick him up. Yes. If, as a wife, if you fall, I can't tell you how I, many times <laughs> I fell into depression. Yes. And Elijah, he would, I'd be like, I'm not going to church. Yeah. I'm not doing it. He said, well, listen, baby, you may not be going to church. But I, I want you to know something. I love you. I'm still praying for you. And me yes. and the kids are still going. Yes. And I was mad. I'm not going to lie. I was mad. But <laughs> Because now, he wanted you, you wanted him to be in that stuck place with you. Yes. You wanted him to like. And how many times we try to invite people into our stuck states? Yes. And, and we don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't need that. We actually need to be encouragers and stuff like that. But it was defi definitely difficult mm -hmm. for me to carry that spiritual weight of the of the family and stuff because you do want your spouse to like grow in the lord and yeah, stuff like that up. especially if they grew up knowing of the word and all mm -hmm. that good stuff you know there's no reason for you to like not not that you shouldn't fall that's not what i'm saying like of course we're all well, gonna fall but like you can't yeah in. like you can't just sit there and like stay in in like oh well i went to church growing up and that's enough to edify you like no this is a growing it process a until we until we leave this earth you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. the lord is going to come back for us you yeah. know like it's like trying to live off last week's oil exactly and you need to be producing every single day yes we need to like i can't you know like leftovers are okay don't get me wrong yeah but a fresh cooked meal is best yes and you know like <laughs> continually daily getting in the word because every time we get in the word we're getting that fresh cooked meal yes we're getting that that new that, that refreshing and that yes. restoration and i also like like to look at it as a like as a vase like this is yourself the vase is yourself mm -hmm. and this is the word and you have to pour it into you in order for this to come mm -hmm. out of you you yeah. know i thought and you was about to pour that coffee <laughs> in my little no. fake plant over here <laughs> No, but like we are bases and we have to feed ourselves mm -hmm. and nurture ourselves spiritually in order to uh, continue to like let people know. And, and, you know, people may be like, why is she even like talking about this or anything like that? Um, you know, it's it's fine that people may dislike what we are doing and stuff like that but in the in in the spiritual realm you don't know how you're going to help somebody else with your testimony so don't exactly. ever be ashamed of what you walk mm -hmm. through uh, because your testimony is is somebody else's walk yeah it's somebody you know? else's breakthrough yes and so because by you getting free by you having conversations like this and i think that's something that we need more of we need yes, more conversation definitely we need more talking about how to how to heal yeah in a real way because sucking it up buttercup it's just not realistic no, no. and so it's being willing like like Open when i sat enough. at the table with you and holly she's like okay we do it with nikki it's time for you to talk yes and when <laughs> holly's going through we all talk about yes. these things and being willing to like that safe space to be able to cry and just you yes. know, because we overcome by the word of our testimony and yes. somebody else is out there who's in bondage. And by your testimony, you have the tools that you need, that they need. Yes. You have the key to unlock the door to their prison that they're in. So don't ever be afraid to tell your testimony, getting outside of your comfort zone and, and just using it to help set somebody else free. Definitely. Because like I say, you know, your pain was not in vain. No. It was for a reason. Yes. What you went through, it was, even if it was just, you know, like, 
to help your children down the line or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. use your pain to set somebody else free definitely and so and so I wanted to uh, let's go over to the part of we've already kind of went through already the walking through like semi walking through divorce say girl we done <laughs> loaded this thing and so but I want to bring us now to date mm -hmm. and stuff because I know back in December that's when you kind of Man, she's on it. Even the kids was like, my mama changed. Like, we got to get it together. <laughs> okay, so like, um, you know, walking it out, you know, the shoulda, coulda, woulda's, all that stuff. I felt stuck and it was like, mm -hmm. I was hurting people that like didn't, cut didn't hurt me, didn't cut me and stuff like that. And and then it, it came to a realization where I was like, you know what, like Nikki, get yourself together because you know how to sit there and you've gone through a lot of things and that you've overcome if the lord didn't leave you then he's sure ain't gonna leave yeah. you now you, you know say yesterday today and, and even whenever i was in the situation that i was in with um my ex-husband and stuff like that like i put up with a lot of stuff and he didn't the lord didn't never left me on contrary it was just like he was showing mercy and grace upon our relationship on you know like he was on my behalf you. and everything else like that you know and i do honestly i felt like a lot of it had to do because i was serving the lord you know if i wasn't serving the lord if neither one of us were like you know if i was out not serving the lord and everything i probably felt would have felt more defeated or like mm -hmm. more um but he harder to get out of where i was at strength honestly strength to be able to endure that difficulty yes endure the situation that you were in yes and um but anyway, so, um, you know, I went through all that. I cut, you know, I was hurting people that, I, that didn't cut me. And then um, in, in December, it was just like, I just felt this shift. This shift just like came over me. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know what, Nikki, get yourself together. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was all like, Lord, you are my strength. And I, I just fell on, I just fell to the Lord. I just like laid it all out. I was like, Lord, I've come to you before, you know, mm -hmm. with my burdens with you know how i felt take this away from me like make me new again you know mm -hmm. bring a new uh spirit and i remember back then you were all like you have these embers in you nikki still you yeah. have these embers that fire it's still it, there it's still there and and i'm telling you right now you may like are walking through whatever you're walking through it may not be a divorce it may be like she like what she walked through mm -hmm. sexual abuse it might be a depression um just different things anxiety whatever but um, I know if you receive the Lord as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you know, um, those, that embers. Those, those embers are still there. And he's just like waiting on you to like call upon him because yes. the, Lord, the word tells us to call upon him and he will hear our cries. I even wrote that one down. Where did I write it? <laughs> um, I think it is... Mm -hmm. Is it Psalms 34, 17? Yep. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. So that right there should give you some encouragement. You know, it doesn't matter. Like you can be laying on your bed or mm -hmm. sitting on your couch or whatever, but you just got to talk to the Lord, you know, yes. let him hear you out. And, and he meets, that's what I love about God. And I always tell people in our church, God meets you where, where you, you are. are. Yeah. So as pastors for us, we meet our people where they're at. Definitely. If Jesus did it, why can't, why aren't we doing that? Yes. And so often we're, we're putting these unrealistic expectations on people mm -hmm. and you know, we're telling them like, oh, you should just be perfect. You should just get it together. And yes. no, if the Lord said that he's near the brokenhearted, then we need to be near yes. the brokenhearted. If he said that he's there with us in the midst middle of it all we should be there for one another in the middle yes, of it all and definitely. being willing to you know and just just talk to him mm -hmm. I'm so thankful like for my relationship with God like I know for me like had it not been for him I can't tell you how many times like I I did attempt to commit suicide I did yeah. but it was like he was like no you gonna live but exactly. you gonna do what I need for you to do <laughs> yes your but, job here ain't done yeah girl. it ain't done yet and knowing that no matter where you are right now you're not done yet. No, you're if not. you're not dead, then it's not done. That's right. You may be depressed, but you're not done. You may discourage. You may be feeling defeated, but you are not done yet. That's right. And God still has a plan for your life, and He still wants to use you. Yes. And um, so where were we at? <laughs> oh, when you talk, girl. What was I? At? Oh yeah. So I went through like my breakthrough was in December. Honestly, I was just like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Enough is enough, Nikki. He's brought you through this. Um, one too many times and mm -hmm. you were walking it through while you were stuck where you were stuck at and it's time for you to move 
get moving not like physically or whatever but like spiritually yeah I, I just felt like this shift and I was like you know what Lord that's right I'm going so it started in January January the first well the shift started in December and then like I was just the Lord was just preparing me and you know just talking to me and like I was getting back to listening to my preachings mm -hmm. worshiping and praying stirring and back like up those stirring things. yeah stirring up them embers again and everything and um it was just like, you know what, Lord? I'm just so happy because whenever you stir up them embers, it's like the fire starts igniting again. Yeah, and, and you're just beginning. I, I, was, I was praising worshiping the other day. I was like, baby, I'm lit. Yeah. And it's like when you stir up those embers, you just get lit for Jesus. Yes. All over again. And that fire is just like, you know. And it, you feel, honestly, you feel like unstoppable. Like you just feel like. Anything can make hit you. Make way through the water. Yes, yes. <laughs> like that song, famous. Make way through the water. Yes. Walk me through the fire. Do what you are famous for. <laughs> what you? I'm trying, <laughs> but I ain't that bold yet. Yes. Um, so, anyways, that's one of my favorite songs. And another thing was like, whenever I do worship, I I, I don't even care. I yeah, I'm exuberant. Like, <laughs> I am like I be so like. I'm like, I'm like, Lord, I can't sit down. Like, I just, I am. Like, I've always been an exuberant worshiper. Because yes. for me, I'm so unashamed. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I have no reason to be That's the thing. Ashamed. It's like, whenever you walk through it, and it's like the Lord just brings you back yeah. and stuff like that. It's like, you just, you're. You get you excited. Yes. Like, it's like, okay, that's fine. And, like, little things don't even bother you anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, that, mm -hmm. you know wood and, and everything and it just it just feels so good to feel unstuck and honestly me walking through this it has helped me um work on areas that I didn't even know needed help you know what I'm saying yeah. I was just focusing on like the divorce that I was walking through and stuff like that but there's other areas in my life that I'm still walking it out you yeah know? and me I mean me too like there's things about I feel like I, I'm like learning myself like mm -hmm. as these things begin to come out and just realizing all these you know like why I feel this and just being able to recognize the emotions you know Definitely. and understanding okay where is this coming from you yes. know and being able to properly just deal with it yes and um, I'm just so grateful and thankful you know for my walk with the Lord because honestly um, I would not be here today right. if it wasn't for him. And the Lord knows, and he I says it like, in his word. Mm -hmm. He leaves a 99 to find the one. And I was the one that was lost. Mm -hmm. And it w I was stuck. And that you was know? me, too. Like, there was you a know? point in time, like, I was that one. Yes. But yet, he still co he's coming back for you. Mm -hmm. And that kind of love from a father. Because for me, I didn't grow up with, like, that 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 fatherly figure yes. my dad was in and out of jail so you, know you didn't know how that? to yeah. love or you didn't know how to receive a man's love. I always say that Elijah my husband was the first person to ever show me what it was truly like to love somebody and that's awesome it wasn't you know everybody else because from being sexually abused I, I went through uh having a sex addiction mm -hmm. and so like everybody you just become like a piece of meat to people yeah and for him you, like you, you like almost felt like lose a sense of worth I yes guess. yeah definitely and for him like you know he he loved me it wasn't what i could give to him or yeah. any of that that's what was so amazing is wasn't i didn't have to give anything yeah. he just loved me and that's how jesus is it's like he died for you before you even gave your life to him. That's right. You know, he endured the cross just because of the love he had for you. Yes. And that kind of love, it just compels you to like, how can I not love yes. him? You know, and when you really get to know God and you really get to just know him, it's like, like, I love you. You yes, know, like and you. you can love your sister in Christ, and you can yes. love. Yes, you can. It's through His love yes. that allows us to love and others. It's agape love that mm -hmm. is unconditional love. Yes. And, no and strings like, attached. Yeah, and and honestly, like walking it out and everything, um, I can honestly say that I I can still love even though um, I walk through what I walk through because honestly. I know what um, the worth that I have. I know that, and I love that, like that you got to that place to recognize I'm valuable. Yes, because there was a point where I was all like, I didn't do something right. You know, I felt like my worth was just diminished. It was like, mm -hmm. it was not there anymore. You know, and it was something that I had to like work on myself and be like, no, girl, it was like get your up. identity was just being chipped away over the yes. years. You know, being married, it was just like your identity just being chipped mm -hmm. at, and now how God is just like. 
we all know you're beautiful. You know what I mean? Thank but you. to know, but when somebody actually knows if you, when you get to know her, you yeah. see the beauty in a different way. Yes. And so how God is just piece by piece built back up that, that beauty, that restoration yes. of your identity. And that's how I feel. Honestly, I just feel like he's restoring me from the inside out. And that was honestly like one of my things. I was like, you know what? The Lord's trying to piece me back together. I cannot sit there and function for anybody else if he ain't going to piece me back together. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to allow him to piece me back together mm -hmm. in order for me to um, receive that kingdom man that he has for me. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> because mm -hmm. honestly, that's what I am looking for. I'm looking for someone. I'm not just going to get anybody, settle. you know, And that's what we anything. talked about is refusing yes. to settle. Like one of the things I've learned is just in walking out my faith is that I refuse to just take the bare minimum yeah. because I don't serve a bare minimum God. I serve an exceedingly and abundantly yes. God. And and recognizing that I don't have to settle, that I don't have to act out of desperation. Exactly. But knowing that, you know, if God would give so and so a good husband, why can't he give me? He's no respected person. Exactly. You know, if he could free somebody else from depression, then he can free me too. Mm -hmm. And understanding that, you know, like just that and so i want to like as we end this you know see girl we already done made it through made it through okay so if, if you could give them some tools and if there's anybody walking out divorce going through divorce or even just went through things with you know like the divorce you went through with your parents and things like that you know what are some if you could just give them advice as we end this you know what is some advice that you could give them so honestly um going back at the age that i was whenever my parents walked out through their divorce, um, I didn't have, like I said, I was not capable of like just going to church by myself or like finding a group of good friends and stuff like that. I mean, yes, I had friends, but like we were all over the world. So, <laughs> you know, but no, the tools that I would give that person now or like, you know, just advocate for and stuff is um, definitely you have pen and paper journal express yes. your feelings like let it out because that was another one of my things this year that i was just like holding it all in and, and like whenever i would talk to my friends it's like i was releasing it but i it wasn't just like releasing it it was just like i don't know just like a weight coming coming yeah. off of you and you don't want to like hold on to things because all it's going to do is make you bitter and yes it it's okay you. yes it consumes you and it's okay to like Feel the effects of whatever you're going through and, and the anger, the bitterness, mm -hmm. the the hurt, the whatever you're going through, like the emotions that you're feeling and stuff. It's okay to, to feel them, but don't stay there, you know? Yes. And another thing was definitely pray. You know, the Lord um, hears your cries in that, in, in that Psalms that I had read to y'all, Psalms um, um, 34, 17. Um you know, he hears our cries and stuff like that. So don't ever feel like he's not there, that he's not listening because he is for sure, you know, and he's, he's working in you. Even when you can't see it, even when you don't feel it, he's working, you know, sometimes we want to feel something uh, in order to like move, you know, but it, you just keep moving forward, you know, and, and keep believing because honestly, like your belief is going to help move mountains as well because it's going to bring that faith in and, and give you that hope that you need. And then another thing is worshiping. Yes. Worshiping, even just like a sweet song, you know. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. There's just something about that name. So, yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, but anyway, so, yes. Like, whenever I'm by myself and I just I just need the Lord to, you know, move and just bring me in and, like, just hold me, you know, embrace me and stuff like that. It's just start worshiping. And if you don't know what to say, just call on his name. Yeah. You know? There's so many times when I feel like all I could say was Jesus. Yes. Like, when there was, oh, there's a song say when you have nothing to say. say. Like, just mm -hmm. like. Oh, is it, I can only imagine when just that, that oh, and, you know, yes. and just, just sing and just be open. Because it starts moving vulnerable. something in you, honestly. Yeah, it it really shifts does. something in you. It really does. And that peace just begins to come over you. Yes. Because there's pr peace in his presence. And when we get into the presence of God, there's just peace there. And there's somebody who's been watching. The Lord's been speaking to me about this. That there's somebody who's watching, you know, and you're walking out of divorce right now. And you've been feeling so shameful and you've just been feeling condemned. And I just want to say that 
There is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And I just want to break that shame off of you right now. I just speak to your spirit and I just speak freedom. And I just say that you would be loosed from that shame. That you would be loosed from that condemnation. That you would be loosed from that guilt. And that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And that you are free indeed from from that condemnation and that guilt that the enemy has been trying to bring to you. Yes. So that's that was awesome. Um, so, however, like I said, journal. Actually, this year I, I started journaling because January the first, I was like, you know what? And um, <laughs> my friend, you know, she's always posting stuff and everything. And I, I seen this decree that she had um, put on her on her page and everything. And I was like, I love that, you know, because you have to speak into existence what you want yes, for out of life and, and everything else like that. that. I'll be honest, like I told her when she read it to me, I was like, wait. That's how familiar. <laughs> She's like, oh, that you wrote that. And I was like, girl, you got me feeling fake. Right? But I twisted I twisted it. And and so I journal now. Uh, I started journaling on, on January the 1st of this year, you know, to help me just like mm-hmm. continue my walk. And I love continue. how consistent. Like, she don't play I was, about her journal. Like, she consistent. <laughs> but it's what you do every day that brings change. Yes. It's not what and you so do every I, now. I yearn there. for that change. Like, I want this change. You know, you, you have hungry. to want it. Yes. And, and whenever I, I had that shift in December, it's like I became hungry again. I like, I want it. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to grow. I want to be able to serve others. I want to be able to um, let my life be a testimony to others. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to uh, help others come become unstuck or yeah. help them in, in just whatever it may be. You know, it might not always be financially that you need yeah. that. You know, I mean, break sometimes through and people stuff. just need an ear. They don't even sometimes need for you to talk. Yes. Sometimes people just need somebody that will listen to them. Yes. It's not just about money and monetary. It's just about... Just be there. I always tell people, be the friend that you would want somebody to be to you. Yes, definitely. So I began I began journaling um, in January the 1st. And so this is my decree that I always say before I start journaling. And it says, I decree and I declare, I am blessed. I am the head and not the tail. I am prosperous in everything that I do. I am wealthy in every area of my life. I am connected to the right people. I am victorious in every situation. Uh, my life is a blessing. My life is a testimony. And I am anointed and I am appointed. Amen, amen, amen. And that's like what I say every day before I, like, <laughs> um, you know, before I journal and stuff. And that has really helped me out a lot. It's just like being that able to. affirmation. Yes. And that's what made me write it is because we need to be affirming who we are. You got to call those things to be not as though they were. Yes. You got to be speaking your victory even when it looks it's like, like it's it, defeat. Yes. You got to be speaking that I, like in writing that I want to people to develop that more than a conqueror right. mentality. mentality yes because if you can change your mentality if you can change your mind you can change your life yes and if you're seeing how your life has been transformed and changed yes. because and I love it too you change your mentality. <laughs> I love it too because like I said there was areas there's areas in my life that I'm still walking out and everything and I'm seeing it because it's like I'm I'm putting this to work and it's working in other areas yeah. of my life and I'm just so blessed honestly and so like I said journal worship up, call on the Lord and um yeah like those are like mm-hmm. the, the three main that have helped me for sure honestly and you know if you have other tools that may help others share them with other yeah. people you Put know don't hold comments. it for yourself yeah don't hold it for yourself because you could be a blessing to others and mm-hmm. I just hope that and that you were blessed by my testimony and what I've overcome and things I'm like proud that of you, girl. you know <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of you honestly and thank you for thank having you, me everybody. you know And we just want to thank y'all for joining us today. And so as we close out, I just want to pray over each and every one of you. Father, I just pray over them. Actually, Lord, Nikki, I want you to pray over them. Okay. Father God, Lord, we come into you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you and we bless you, yes, Father, Lord, Lord for the, the, the viewers that we had today, Heavenly Father God, Lord. Let it not be to honor and glorify us, Lord, but to honor and glorify you, Heavenly Father God. And let it be work, Lord, that you had um, aligned for us yes, to be Lord. able to reach souls, Lord, that are walking through the pain, that are walking through the, their divorce, whatever, this, whatever situation it may be, Heavenly Father God. Lord, that you restore them, Heavenly Father God, Lord, that you meet them where they're at. Lord, that you uh, give them that peace, that joy, Lord, to help them edify um, in their lives. Like, rise up, Lord. We don't want to stay stuck, Lord, but that, you know, they rise up, Lord, and that they know that your name is the only name that 
they can call upon, Lord, and you're going to shift. You're going to do a shift in their lives, Heavenly Father God, right now. Lord, and I just ask that you minister to them, that you put laborers in their lives, yes. that you even use them as vessels, Heavenly Father God, to bless other people's lives, Heavenly Father God. Lord, I just thank you, and I honor and I glorify you, Father God, for um, all the souls, Lord, that are being restored right now that uh the people that have received lord uh, you lord as their uh christ, christ and savior jesus christ lord um i just i'm just so grateful and thankful lord to you father for just changing us lord and ministering to us and just leading that and direct us lord, directing us lord and um i just ask that whatever household was re represented tonight lord that you send a supernatural blessing to them heavenly father god lord and um whatever their needs may be lord that you meet them heavenly father god because you are a, a father yes. that meets all our needs and um i just bless you lord and i thank you heavenly father god lord and i honor and i love you jesus in your name i pray and give you thanks lord amen amen amen, amen. thank y'all for joining us bye y'all bye